Hello, Facebook. Let's give a warm welcome to our guests, Deepak Chopra, Kabir Sagal, and Paul Afghernas. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you. So, Deepak, talk to us about this incredible book and music of poems, songs, meditations. What's the inspiration? The inspiration is uh, our turbulent times and the fear being generated in the United States about immigrants. Everybody in this country is an immigrant, either first generation, second or third generation. This country's uh, robustness comes from maximum diversity, shared vision, emotional and spiritual connections, and look outside there. It's the melting pot of the world. And so this is uh, to honor immigrants who made America great. We don't need to make America great again. It is already great. And it's great because of the immigrants in this country. We couldn't agree more. So for our friends on Facebook who might not know, could you talk to us a little bit about your immigration story? I came to this country after medical school, 23 years old. And How'd that go? Uh, I landed with nothing, zero. <laughs> I had to make a collect call to my hospital to get there. But as you know, things evolved, and now I'm here with you on NASDAQ. So why, are, why do you feel that, America, that you know, immigrants are so important to America, especially now in these times? Well, 30% uh, of all new entrepreneurs are immigrants, Silicon Valley is mostly immigrants. All the great contributions have come from Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Go to any university and look at academia, and it's full of immigrants, uh, whether it's in science or humanities or philosophy, except for the American Indians, whom we slaughtered, uh, the original colonial empire slaughtered, um, and that's a shameful part of our history. Uh, but Everybody else is an immigrant. We need to honor those that were the original, uh, you know, original uh, home dwellers of this land. I couldn't agree more. I mean, especially with all of the companies that list on NASDAQ, we have so many that are operated and started by entrepreneurs of immigrant descent. Right. Um, so, Paul, what was it like to work with Deepak Chopra on Home? Oh, it's really a dream come true. I. Uh, Loved and admired Deepak for many decades now, and uh, it just was so fantastic recording Deepak singing and playing yeah. instruments. It's beautiful. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, it's just uh, a real dream come true. And of course, working with my friend Kabir, I've known for a few years, an amazing fellow. And we have a wonderful team, extended team. Too numerous to mention all of them right now, but uh, it's just fabulous, fabulous project. So proud of it and happy. Fantastic. And you are a first generation uh, of Greek heritage. You want to talk to us a little bit about your parents' story? Oh, sure. Yeah, it's a wild story. My father got uh, hired onto a freighter as a chief engineer from London going all the way over to uh, Portland. But in the Suez, I mean, sorry, the Panama Canal, he got appendicitis and they wouldn't let him off the ship to uh, get medical attention. But he didn't die and he made it around to Portland and um, at that point, he was able to jump ship. He got a Greyhound bus down to Oakland, where his sister was, and she took him to the hospital. Then World War II started, and uh, that uh, freighter he was on was sunk by a, a submarine on the way back to London. So a lot of grace and blessings. All of, the, all of these stories are so amazing. And um, so he ended up working in the defense industry, helping to defeat uh, Hitler and, and the fascists. So. Uh, and he always loved America so much. The, the people, he always said, the people are so kind to me, so nice, and, and the buildings, the cities are so beautiful. And he was so proud to be an American citizen, so proud to be part of this great country. I feel like all immigrants are so proud to be in so, America. So, so like, core to the ideals of America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so core. So I mean, you are a composer, a performer, a producer, a Grammy winner. Um, what was it like to work on home versus maybe some of the other projects you've worked on? Well, this is, a sp this is so special for me personally because I've never been active in 
uh, s spiritual activism or sacred activism. Or What's spiritual activism? Right, so that's the idea of um, using your art form for an artist, a musician, using your art form to express noble truths and, and essential goodness and shine some positive light on this conversation that we're having about immigration and about diversity. And uh, as uh, Deepak often says, uh, the artists, the musicians, the poets, are often are rebels, and that the people in power are afraid of them because they always speak the truth, and they speak it convincingly and with heart. And uh, that's why you see in a lot of fascist uh, regimes, they, they persecute the artists and the intelligentsia. Mm -hmm. They're the first to go because yeah. they're the voice of reason, the voice of, of wisdom. So it's very special for me. I've never been part of something like this, but you know, in this last year or two, like so many of us, I felt so compelled to say and do something. And then when this came up, I said, well, this is perfect because I can use my, my art form, my music, in a gentle, loving way to make a positive statement. That's beautiful. Sacred activism, Project. sacred activism doesn't fight the darkness. It shines the light. That's wonderful. So I was listening to the music, and my favorite track on it was Survivor. Could you talk to me a little bit about that and what the story was behind it? Go for it. Go for it. Oh, sure. So Survivor is inspired by a wonderful fellow from Colombia, uh, a first responder, Jimeno. William Jimeno. William Jimeno, yeah. And uh, he, he was one of the brave men and women that went right into the jaws of destruction on 9-11 and his whole team perished. And he was the only man in his team to survive. So we wanted to make a tribute to him. And this is such an essential immigrant story. Immigrants, Kabir has served with, with uh, immigrants who are not even citizens and they're on the front line fighting. They're risking their lives for American values. Yeah. And that really sums it up. So here's this fellow, he's from Colombia. He didn't have to go right into the jaws of death. He could have turned around and run the other way, which most people would have done. I mean, it's terrifying. But he didn't. He went right into there, and he did his best, and saved some people. And you know, that's a real American. That's a real American hero there. Yeah. Absolutely valiant. So Kabir, I mean, you have a very different journey of your own. I mean, you've worked on IPOs before. What's it like to uh, IPO home on the NASDAQ? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I've, I've done my fair share working on Wall Street, and this is my first time uh, working on an IPO of an album and a book, and it's. It's beautiful to see. I hope this music calms the markets. You know, we're having some. It is right now. Yeah. This is not neither buy nor sell. This is just peace, right? So it's cool it. <laughs> cool it. Yeah, and it's fun because, you know, working on Wall Street, I, I worked on Wall Street for nearly a decade, and there's a lot of diversity on the street, too. When you go into most trading floors or a lot of these depart banking departments, people are from all over the world. I mean, I had colleagues from Hong Kong and Malaysia and South Africa and you really get to see that Wall Street's a really meritocratic place. You're sort of judged on your skills and your talents and even looking at stuff like the Fortune 500, you know, there's about 40 percent of the companies that are on the Fortune 500 were founded by an immigrant or a first generation American. I mean, think about that, right? Mm, I mean, immigrants make up historically about 10 or 11 percent of the overall population. So these are companies like Google Right, Sergey Brin, a co-founder. We, we wrote a poem about Sergey Brin, um, in actually composed in computer code. Uh, a poet, uh, it's called Code Poetry. Code poetry. And there's, uh, you know, think about Ray Kroc at McDonald's. His parents were from, uh, his family's from Poland, right? We're here in Times Square. There's a great musical going on called War Paint, right? And that's inspired by Helena Rubinstein, who is the great cosmetic ma magnate. And there's a poem in our book about Helena. Uh, Rubenstein, who was a great patron of the arts. So you can't, you know, disentangle the immigrant experience from the American experience. The immigrant experience is the American experience. It's, you know, we're, we're well represented on Wall Street, we're well represented in the arts, in commerce, in science. So this the military. The military, yeah. And so this project uh, shines a light on all those uh, highways that converge uh, in, in America, and we hope that it will continue to converge in such a bright way. Wow. So how did you go about choosing the immigrants who you worked with in composing some of the poems and songs on the album? Well, we wanted to do just that. And um, 
showed the diversity of America, right? So there's a collection. We thought first about the different um, areas of the world that people come from. So we, there's a, um, <clears throat> we placed a priority on people from Latin America, particularly Mexico. So we oh, really? feature uh, Reina Grande, uh, who's a, a acclaimed novelist. There's a poem about her, about Carlos Santana, William Celia Cruz. Celia Cruz. Wow. We want to, yeah. you know, we. We believe in, in, uh, <laughs> in being amicable and having great relationships with our closest neighbors. We also wanted to shine the light on people from Asia, right? And, and I am Pei, the great architect mm. who, built, who designed many of the buildings um, here in the city, right? Oh. Uh, Deepak wrote a poem about his father. I wrote one about my father. We have a poem about Paul's father because this is a very personal story for us. You know, my father came all the way from India when he was 16 and worked at a Goodyear factory. And then, of course, gender and religion, and I mean, I'm not sure we covered every <laughs> every element of the immigrant experience, but we even, you know, you said your background was Italian, right? Uh, some Italian in there. We had yep. some, um, we featured some Italian Americans in there. So even your heritage is featured prominently in this book. If we can live together here with this kind of diversity, then uh, we can all feel at home here. But the rest of the world can be inspired to create that critical mass that we need for a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier, and joyful world. It's fantastic. I mean, you can really <clears throat> tell that there's just, there's so much personal in here, and yet there's, you found a way to be so inclusive of just about every culture and creed that, you know, that makes America immigrants in so, such a wonderful country. And I mean, it's a really incredible achievement. Thank you. Um, so, like, what, what drew you together to create home? Because I'm really interested in, in that story and how you all came together. Well, you know, I've been in, uh, involved in music for a while, a musician, and um, I've been more looking at the jazz space. And Deepak and I worked on a project last year which turned uh, presidential speeches into uh, a big band jazz suite. And uh, I've also known Paul for a while. And I thought, well, what was going on in the world and politics? I said, wouldn't it be nice to take music that Paul is generally familiar with and his sort of style of music, which is very contemplative, meditative music, but also introduce some elements of, um, you know, politics. Some people might call it subversive. Yeah. But we just wanted to um, combine the elements. So it really came together, you know, out of the beginning of the year as uh, these draconian measures were coming into place in, in early 2017. We, got, we didn't get angry, we got busy, and we started creating. And I think that's the charge for this project. Like, hopefully, you know, for those watching at home, like, write a poem about your heritage, you know? Yeah, I mean, for me, it doesn't even feel as subversive. It feels like healing. Yeah. Or, like, I mean, it's, it's really beautiful. Thank you. Um, and how, talk to me about, like, working on the songs. Like, how did you put them together? What was, what was your process? Yeah. Well, we, uh, we look to the uh, ethnic history and the cultural history of the, uh, of the immigrant, like uh, Khalil Gibran. You know, we thought, well, maybe we can bring in some Middle Eastern elements from Lebanon. And um, maybe for uh, Audrey Hepburn, maybe we could paraphrase um, the great song from her most famous movie. You know, just little musical devices but still keeping it very soothing and, and, and new age and uplifting. It was a lot of fun to I, do. I, I should say that the project is produced by two great new age um, gentlemen, Will Ackerman, who's sort of a legendary new age producer, and Jeff Oster. So we relied on their guidance, and when we were selecting which musicians to put on which track, I'll, there's personal stories to each song. So on Queen, which is inspired by Celia Cruz, you have Chimbo Cornell, who actually performed with Celia Cruz. Uh -huh. uh, on Whisper, which is inspired by Yo-Yo Ma, we have Kate Dillingham, who is a phenomenal, one of the best uh, uh, cellists uh, in our community, music community. Um, Geetha Novotny, uh, she's an Indian American. She is featured on the song in inspired by my father. So we try to create, just not just randomly choose people, but just find personal stories to every single uh, person we invited on the project. The yeah. songs, the poetry, they all reflect uh, a meditative quality also for this. Uh, and and, I'm, and for that, is, that is absolutely yeah. where I see your voice in this. I mean, yeah. you can almost see each of your voices in it, and I, I really felt that, and, and, and your selections are just so, so poignant. Um, if there's something that you really want people to know about home, what, what would it be? All of us. 
should always be at home. So home is not only where you live, but it's also a state of being. That's and you take it wherever you go. Wherever you go, there you are. That's a fantastic <laughs> message to end this. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here at NASDAQ. And everyone, please go pick this up. It will lift your day, your month, your year. It's wonderful. Go get it. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. That was great. Thanks. Thank you.